Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is going to be such an exciting interview. Uh, we're going to be talking with Hal Lindem, and I have to tell you, it's just a great pleasure to um, talk with him. He's in New York, and he's working on a new movie. It's called The Story of Samuel. And it's, no, it's uh, called, sorry. It's called The Samuel Project. Oh, the Sam, I'm sorry, the Samuel Project. Oh, okay, I got right. that wrong. Well, that's good. Now people will realize the Samuel Project. Oh, yes, and right. that's right, because of the art project. But I'm going to let you kind of talk about why you love this. And I mean, you could probably do so many things. A lot of people are always wanting you to, to star in their shows. But why do you love this one? Uh, the truth, I love them all. <laughs> Okay. No, you put the same effort, the same sweat, the same research, the same love into every project you do. Some are winners, some are losers. Uh, so uh, I love them all. Uh, this one turned out, I think, really well. So I'm really excited for other people to see it. Uh, it's called the Samuel Project because it's about a, a, a school project for uh, my grandson in the film. And he his project is to tell a story. It's from for an art media class in uh, uh, drawings, in animation, however he wants to tell a story. And he's looking for a story to tell. And he comes from a family, single father, who's busy with his life trying to sell real estate, doesn't have really time for the boy. Uh, the grandfather's got a, a dry cleaning business. That's all he does. He doesn't have time for them. Nobody talks to anybody. But that's <laughs> the way. Typical. That's today. the way it works. Yep. That's the way. Well, and, and it's natural when you think about it. I mean, we have different music, different dress, different haircuts for each generation, specifically because the generations want to be separated they don't want to you don't want to be like your father you want to be your own person so it's it's very difficult for generations to communicate and because of this project it and it's done through art it's done through drawing done through animation and that art turns out to be more eloquent than words and they and it does bring the three of them together so that's what the picture is really about. That's why it's called the Samuel Project because it's a it's a, uh, a school project. But you, I, I when I first saw part of the trailer, uh, they you as the grandfather was brought in kicking and screaming. You really didn't think that you wanted to do anything particularly with him, did you? Well, uh, the grandfather's backstory is he came from Germany during the war. He was a DP. Uh, how he survived in Germany during the war is the story. But like many people who went through that, they don't want to talk, they don't talk about it. Years and years go by before they'll even talk about what happened. And Samuel is, is like that. That's, he, he just doesn't talk. As the line from the show is when he asks him about it, the line from the picture is, I don't remember too much, and what I do remember, I don't want to remember. Mm. Yep. So he's not anxious to relive it. Yes, you're but absolutely... The boy yeah. finally gets him to, to talk, and, and it becomes the project. It becomes the the presentation that you see at the end of the picture. Yes, and, and what you said is so true. In fact, um, I work with a lot of authors, and there's one whom has just recently found, <clears throat> excuse me, found her mother's diary, which was all in German. And it, oh it, and it was wonderful, though. It went through years and years of things. And it's going to be a book, but it's going to be much bigger than that. And you're absolutely right. And she was very close to her mother. She never saw the diary, didn't know anything. Her mother died. And she found it in drawers. And she found the diary. And, yeah. and so, and here down in South Florida, you know, we have so many Holocaust uh, survivors. Oh, sure. And so I think this is going to be a fabulous, fabulous movie down here. We I, want to help promote I just this. Want, I just 
<laughs> want people to see it. Yeah, well, we'll try you to know, help. I, it, it's, it's, yes, I'm very proud of it. It's, it's, it's good work. And it was beautifully directed, beautifully put together. Because I, of course, you know, you only do your part when you make a movie and you never see the whole thing. And when they put it together, it's, that's what a director, a good director does is you, you, you make sure that the right story is being told. Did you bond with the young man who is your grandson? Very much so. Very much so. Uh, he's a, a bright young guy who um, had a major career with Disney. Mm. Uh, you know, so he's he was used to doing these kind of frivolous parts, and here he had a part where he had to really dig and <laughs> and, and 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 work at it. So it was good for him, too. Yeah, I'm sure he saw you in Barney Miller and uh, was, like, mesmerized. He was very, it was a good relationship. Right, and yeah. so this is wonderful for him, too. Well, so actually there aren't many people in the uh, in the movie, I gather, now, but you had a, you went to the class project, and how did they accept you, the kids? I'm sorry, say that again. How, Which how, well, the kids in the class, because he was... He took you to the class, right? I mean, it was a project. no. He doesn't take me to the class. Oh, I thought he did. No, I don't go to the class. No, he is. The class project is to to uh, tell the story in art, in uh, different kinds of art forms that they've been studying, and he, he stumbles onto the fact that there is a story behind Grandpa. I see. And so he has to get that story out of me because Grandpa's not too anxious to discuss it. And he does, uh, in his own way, he gets the, 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 whatever he needs to do to make the project to finish it. And he finally puts together the Samuel Project, um, which, as I said, you know, kind of brings the family back together, if you will. But more to the point, he has now become aware of, of what Grandpa went through and what people go through. Uh, Grandpa was a DP who couldn't get into Israel. I had to, you know, go wherever they would send him, wherever he could go. That's not uh, uh, over with. There, look at all the Syrian refugees. Who, who, yes. You know, they can't get into people trying to go in rowboats across the Mediterranean to get away from poverty and, and, and chaos. So it's not a, uh, an un, it's not an, uh, a forgotten story. It's, it's today's headlines. History repeats itself, right? But, but let's go back there to the, now it was cute because I did see the scene where you're, you are, you've had this dry cleaners for a long time. And you get to have Eli, your grandson, come work there. It was a bargain you made with him, right? That that's the that's the bargain you make. You <laughs> work there for free if I tell him the story. <laughs> so funny. But and, that's not that's not why I do it. I know. Uh, he has also one. Well, that's not the point. He has also done a sketch of a picture he saw of me as a boy, uh, and he has. Uh, he, there was a photograph, and he's done it in hand, sketched it in hand, and he shows me the picture of someone who fought for what he believed in. Mm. He says, "And I'm fighting too. I want to. I don't want to go to community college. I want to be an artist." Oh, I didn't know that and, part and, of it. Wow. Well, it, it, we couldn't do the whole thing in the trailer. <laughs> the point is, he gets his project done. So really, it's also the story. It's mainly the story about a dedicated kid who's got a project to do and against all odds gets it done. And he finds his grandfather. And finds his grandfather and his father at the same time. Oh, so how did that... Or they, they find him. They realize what he has in him, you know. And and so actually, you you encouraged him to do the art and not to go... 
and be something else that his father obviously wanted him to be. No, I, I, no, no. I, he he doesn't need my encouragement. Uh-huh. He, that's what he wants to do. He, the point is that he has to do this project. He needs a, a better computer. He needs he needs my input. He needs my story. His father's almost is too busy even to pay att- attention to any of the problems. He's he, all he told him is. I can't afford art school. You go have to go to community college, you know. <laughs> and on the weekends, you can do your art, you know. Right. But so he has he has all these uh, obstacles in his path, but he perseveres and he gets the project done. It isn't until we see the project that that his father and his grandfather re- realize what they got there. And what did they get there? What was it? What did they see? First of all, they see a boy who's accomplished what he set out to do. Not too many people do that. Uh, and second of all, they see a talented boy in art. And not only that, somebody who, who make, made sense out of the story. Not just the story, but what the story teaches him. So he, he, he learns. The ability to learn, the ability to to take information and make sense out of it. Yes, you see all of that by the end of the picture. Do you think that this would be a good picture for young people to see? It's imperative for young people to see. First of all, to give them the sense that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. That's the boy's story. Secondly, to know that there's something about history that they have to learn. That even though you're setting out to do uh, whatever it is you have in, in your life, you're walking on pavement that other generations paved for you. So you should realize your place in the history of your family. I think that's also uh, important for young people to know. They, a lot of young kids think that the world started, you know, last week. <laughs> that's well put. That's that's really beautiful. And so, how how many other characters are in the movie? The, you, of course, Eli, and, and his father. Uh, his now, what teacher, else? Uh, his teacher. Mm-hmm. He has a buddy that he has to that he works with, uh, a musician, and uh, and uh, his father is a butcher. He wants him to be a butcher. He wants to be a musician. So they have the same, uh, it's a parallel story. Uh, a butcher who's a, a, a friend of his grandfather's. Uh, who else is in it? Uh, Are there women in this? Yes, there's um, there's a uh, advertising executive who's a, who's a customer, who he meets as a customer. And, and, Turns out to be a major ad- advertising executive, which is not bad for an artist to know. Yep. Uh, who else is in it? And you said the father well, is yes, single. The school so. teacher. Mm-hmm. Who, you know, <clears throat> kids in the class. Is this, uh, but it's a very small, it doesn't, it's not trying to make any bigger points than that. There are no, uh, you know, no, no uh, car crashes. Nobody gets killed. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Is it in New York? Is that where it takes place? Or anywhere? Well, I, I'm in New York right now. What is it? I know. So does it happen yeah. in New York, the, the movie? No, 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 no. It's shot in San Diego, California. Oh, but yeah. what is it supposed to be in a, a in city? In San Diego. Oh, it's supposed to be it's, San Diego. Oh. Yes, yeah, supposed to be San Diego. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, and do you know why they chose, why the writer chose a dry cleaning shop? No, <laughs> but I'll <laughs> tell you how it was an independent production, and we had an actual dry cleaning shop that we used for the uh, for the uh, uh, shoot, and uh, because it was an independent production, whenever a, a real customer came in. We had to stop shooting, service the real customer. <laughs> when they left, we'd go back and make a movie. That's terrific. Yes. Oh, well, you certainly get them to come in to the movie, you know, to watch the movie. Well, <laughs> yes, the people who... <laughs> right. 
Well, I wonder if you can relate this to a lot of other people in, in the same age as you and then with their grandchildren and the stories. And do you see this as a very similar vein do, through all that? Do I see it as a what? As a similar, as a similar vein running through all these generations. I'll tell you, uh, I was sitting at a dinner table with my granddaughter sitting next to me, and she was uh, texting someone. So I took out my phone, and I texted her. <laughs> I said, the gentleman on your right oh is my. your grandfather. Please say hello. <laughs> You're true. Okay, do we, do we have lack of communication between the generations? Of course. Oh, I love this And it's this perfectly story. natural. Story. Perfectly normal, but we have to make an effort to reach across those generations so that we can share, so the young people can share my experiences. I, mean, I hope they don't go to waste. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that I, what I have learned, if I can impart that to to future generations, that's that's very positive. But in order to do that, you got to be able to communicate with them. So let's take so, your life personally that way. What would you like to communicate with your grandchildren, or have you already? Um, passion. Passion. I'm a very lucky human being, and I get to spend my life doing something I adore doing. And, and, and it's a very enlightening occupation. Think of how many people I've been. Because you are them when you're playing them. Mm-hmm. I mean, think of how many different lives I've lived, how many different emotions I've experienced. And, uh, try to to get your grandchildren to to have a passion and to follow it. That's all. Yeah, that, that's a good point. That's they always say that, right? If you have a passion, it's not like working. That's right. You're never, you're never working. And and how did you start out? I mean, I know we're talking about your your new movie coming up, the Samuel Project. It opens October 21st, as a matter of fact, and I will certainly love to see it uh, when it comes out, and I'll promote it in our magazine and okay. and everything. But, Please, yeah, I will, I will. But I want to talk about you a little bit, and because you have okay. been so great. How did you start out? Well, I started out as a musician. I had no interest in theater, whatever. I didn't even go to the theater. I was a musician. I was a classical clarinet player. Then I was a jazz saxophone player. I was the boy singer in big bands. And that's what I was going to do until <laughs> the big band era went away <laughs> and left me behind. <laughs> and by that time, I had done some uh, uh, soldier shows in the Army, things like that. I was, as I said, I was always the boy singer, the, the personality kid in front of the band. Um, so when when the big bands went away and I was, I had decision to make. What do I want to do? I said I'll try that acting thing. And once I got involved with that, I specifically put my horns away for 20 years. I wouldn't play them because I didn't want to be distur- distracted from the choice I had made to go in, into theater and become an actor. Just like that, huh? I mean, it, sends ta- it talks a lot about talent that you can... Just be- like that. <laughs> of course, it took... Um, let me see now. About 16 years to become solvent, but uh, it was worth it. <laughs> well, you but... Amazing! You never went to, went never went to um, acting school, and and even the musician. So where did you, so you started out as the musician? So then you said you waited twenty years. So do you ever play your your? Um... Oh yeah, no, I picked that. I say twenty years because uh, later on, in uh, when I was in Cal- in California, I was doing a, a television special with uh, the Captain and Tennille, and <laughs> they were shooting it in New Orleans. Oh. And uh, when we were talking about what I was going to do on the show, I said, you know, New Orleans, I used to play the clarinet. I could probably get it back enough to, to play some Dixieland. <laughs> so uh, we did just that. 
And that's what got me back started on it. I've been playing back ever since. I still play now. Oh, do you play but in clubs? Just cl- a clarinet. I, yeah, I, I do you play in clubs? Or or how do you, where, where do you play? Well, I, I, uh, I have a concert act that I do quite a bit in Florida, hmm. uh, in which I play the clarinet. Well, let me know where and when, and I'll go. So what do you mean you play? Now, you live in New York generally, though, or you live in California? Where no, live? I live in California. I live in Los Angeles. I see, and then you just come down here when you... And you're your friends uh, and your family? Yeah. Uh, I've been coming down to Florida since the middle 90s, hmm. doing doing concerts at most of the uh, Big, most of the venues, you yeah, know. Yeah, the, the, the theaters. The, well, not, the, not necessarily the theaters. The, um, well, they have, what do you call them? Well, they have cafes. The condos. Yeah. The, oh, the real? Condo you do this? A condo circuit? I didn't know that. You oh, are, sure. This is so, this is great. Who knew? And, and, and I am going to ask you a very strange question because I always ask this of people. What was your mother like? Did you feel loved by your mother? And I can even tell you. <laughs> well, I tell you that. I say that. And you know why? Because and you can see people's personalities and I can almost tell the people who their mother loved them and they knew they were loved because when they didn't feel uh, that, they were not like you. Right? I, um, uh, um my mother lived to be 98 years old. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, down here in uh, South Florida? Had a, had a kind of acerbic sense of humor uh-huh. till the day she died. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, my father was the, was the, the gentle soul in my life. My mother was the balabus who, who, <laughs> you know, ran yes. the house and, and, and made sure everybody was on time and did everything they had to do. Uh, she made sure I practiced my clarinet. Ah. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, so, but my mother was, uh, but, uh, again, she had a, 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 a kind of pointed sense of humor. So she was never, uh, what, what am I looking for? She was, she never was it warm and over, cuddly? Anymore. Is what you're probably going to say. Warm and cuddly? Mm, I wouldn't call her warm and cuddly. Yeah, that's right. That's, no. what, that's what you said. She wasn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't say warm and cuddly. I would say, uh, well, it's, what's the word? Straightforward. Ah, okay. Straightforward. She told the truth every time. Mm-hmm. And maybe she said what my mother used to say, because I grew up in Miami Beach. She would say, if you can't put it on the front page of the newspaper, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Well, listen, good good message to people who text right. and end up oh, very, yeah. or email, right. and end up very in a lot of trouble for what they said. <laughs> or did, or showed. You're right. Right. Good, good, good lesson. Yeah, good lesson. Do you have uh, brothers and sisters? I had one brother. Uh, he died about, uh, he was my older brother. He died about almost 10 years ago now. Um, yeah. What was your? Uh, also a musician. He ah. was a musician all his life, though. Hmm. He was a violist hmm. who ended up as one of the fine viola teachers in America. Hmm. And, um, Spent his entire life doing that. He died playing the viola, playing in the string quartet. He just you're like, kidding. The heart gave up. Really? No, well, while what, he was that's, playing, yeah. that's a nice way to die, though. I would say. Oh yeah, doing what you love doing. Doing what you love doing. I tell you, if if if, if my pa- I don't know if they intended it, but my parents turned out two people who who actually pursued their passion, which uh, is not a, not a bad. Uh, Epitaph. And, and what were they? What were the what were what were their passions? My father's passion was Zionism. Really? My father was an ardent Zionist from the beginning of the century. Yeah. Really. And he uh, he uh, pursued it and supported it here. And it's one of the things he passed on to me was uh, my uh, was Zionism. Huh. And your mother? Yeah. My mother was a homemaker. My right. mother was a homemaker. She just made sure that everything would work right, you know, and everybody did what they were supposed to do. <laughs> uh, she, uh, 
she, she was a, 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 also maybe a, a, at the wrong time because she was a uh, a bookkeeper who, uh, when she got married, gave up her job and became a homemaker. But uh, but I, I all we all knew that she was a terrific bookkeeper and was really sorry to give up the work. Mm. But that was the time. Yes. Today she would have kept the job. <laughs> right. And how about right. your family? You you want to talk? I'd love to know about your family. I can't find that anywhere. My ki- my kids. I got four kids, eight grandchildren. Uh. Uh, none of them will be president of the United States, <laughs> but but they all still talk to me. Oh, but you know, nowadays I, that's pretty good, right? That's all I want to do is make sure I still keep in touch with them and they still want to be in my presence. Right, texting or otherwise, right? And are you, uh, so, uh, I guess... More than that, it's, uh, it's a once-a-year family reunion uh, that's uh, that we're going to be going. To, we'll be doing it this uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas week. That's great. They all come to my place in Palm Springs, and we, mm-hmm. and all the all the grandchildren are together. Even though the half of my grandchildren are on the East Coast, half on the West Coast, but this way they can get together. That's wonderful. Well, how it has been so nice talking with you and the Samuel Project opening October the twenty first. I know we'll see it everywhere and especially here in south florida where it really believes and look forward to meeting you personally one day and thank you so much a pleasure all right goodbye bye-bye now